top two. That's it. Just the words top two. And the red line at the bottom, I took 14 of the most popular kind of MOOC and online education terms and combined them into one, one query. Uh, those are terms like online education, MOOC, course, uh, uh, online courses, video class, uh, and some of the brand names like Khan Academy, Coursera, Udacity. Put them all into one search bucket, and it's that red line at the bottom. So when you compare it to how many people are looking for how to, it's, it's basically nothing. So the world kind of seems to be missing this transition. And it's pretty clear to me from being on Wikipedia for nine years that Wikis are really the ideal platform for just in time education. Uh, Wikihow is, Wikipedia is, it, it's about time we really focus on getting good at that because that's, that's basically what we're doing. So for the rest of the talk, I'll like to talk about what we're doing in Wikipedia just in time education. So the pride and joy of Wikihow for the our first nine years has really been our text. We try that, just like Wikipedia, very high quality text, very informative, very educational. I'm not going to read this whole article to you here, and hopefully you'll never read this article. But <laughs> if, if you do need this article, it's actually a brilliant read. Um, it's the sort of stuff you like to read from Wikipedia. That said, we're now trying all sorts of different media forms to, to teach people better and faster. This is an example of an article. This is how to spread And you can see it has uh, 
say is the top 150 website for new uh, We are more popular than a lot of brands folks have probably heard of, like the Wall Street Journal, Pandora, Groupon, Expedia, National, Fox News. And when you compare to other large have two websites, uh, like about.com, answers.com, eHow, and Sparkles, we're larger than almost all. Uh, and this is even more impressive because those, all these other sites on the page you're seeing here are all owned by publicly traded companies with hundreds of millions of dollars of capital to put to work, hundreds of employees or thousands of employees in some cases. And Wiki Howe is a company that we've completely bootstrapped. We haven't taken any donations. We haven't taken any venture capital or investor money. And we have it's staffed by 20 people working at a house in Palo Alto, California. And yes, I'm not kidding. Here's a picture of our house. The, uh, here we are working on our front porch. Here we are working on our back porch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> here we are working in our house. And here we are baking brownies with Wiki Marco on them. <laughs> yeah. Now we have a lot of, there's, I, I just be clear, there's a lot of people besides just the people who work in the house and how often they would get out of it. But it is still an interesting comparison to these other big companies. Yet, despite the fact that we're a top 150 site on Alexa, we're still only serving 2% of the US population. So we're proud of what we've done, we're proud of what we've accomplished, but we have a long, long way to go to the mission. And one of the things we've been investing really heavily in is moving Wikipedia out of the English only site to a non English language. We now have over 25 million readers of our non English wikis. Some of them are quite popular. Spanish has over 10 million readers a month. Portuguese are five. Italian, French, Russian, and German, both have, all have over 2 million readers a month. And I'm very proud to announce that today I have some actual news. We're launching a new nation and a check.
many illustrations that I just say upload like wiki visual and put that like that person or bot. Right, so that's that's an example. A lot of those images are examples of things we've used to staff efforts. So we had our we had our freelancers around the world to go create those images. Um, it was one of these things that we got great uh, uh, static imagery from contributors, but we weren't getting the illustrations we wanted. We weren't getting as many illustrations. And so we really ramped that up.
Wikipedia and, and WikiHow. Uh, Wikipedia sort of containing a lot of the uh, more academic text, and WikiHow sort of sort of the more more practical um, applications of of that, uh, or how to, how to actually do things, which is something that uh, Wikipedia articles are, don't necessarily focus on. Um, to what extent do you think there's a so sort of like a, an integration between the information on Wikipedia and the information on WikiHub. Um, so for example, if, um, I always like to use this rather crazy, crazy example, smelting steel. So there's a fantastic article on, on Wikipedia on smelting steel, but it mostly deals with the history of it and the science of it. There's actually a better article, a math subject, to pick in most math subjects. Very, very good, very well written, uh, very technical, uh, they go into a lot of detail, but they don't explain things, most maths articles don't explain things in easy to understand step-by-step -step processes, uh, which is something that would be housed a bit, bit better on. To what extent do you think there's a, a s I want to use uh, the term uh, singularity, but they're coming together like an, e an equilibrium between these you know, two it's, sources? It's, it's interesting, I think the content would have a hard time coming together just because the goals by which each curriculum turned out to be so different. And even just you know, the way we write it with out, it would never ever pass the way things work in Wikipedia. We just have very different rules that would just the sourcing requirements alone. You can't source Wiki out the same way you source inside of Wikipedia. Because quite often there is no published source on this. It's five people said, ten people said. And so you, it's a whole different whole different ball of wax. And we also rather than writing I think by the nature of the topics and the nature of what it's trying to be, right to a more complex degree level, WikiHow tries to keep things simple. And we want we want to have it more broadly understandable. Uh, I, so I think we do get actually editors working on both projects. And I imagine they have to sort of you know, switch brain, brain brain mindsets a little bit when they switch between projects. I suppose what I'm asking is, is it is it worth people's while to say put together a wiki project which seeks to, say, um, have that sort of integration on some level. So you have your article on a math subject very, on Wikipedia, very well done, but then you have a link at the bottom uh, supplied by you know, this project to the WikiHow uh, page, which actually tells you the practical steps to make it happen. Yeah, that's right.
later in comparison to English or other languages like Catalan, for example. So, uh, on, uh, within Wikipedia, uh, it's, it's, it's 10th anniversary was just in the month of June this year, and it was for us a, a milestone, an important milestone in a 10 year project and having passed the 50,000 uh, 50, uh, article milestone. So we are, or Britain Wikipedia is the 71st Wikipedia among the two, uh, nearly 300 uh, project, Wikipedia project. Uh, Wikipedia in Britain is the uh, 71st one. Uh, according to the number of articles, and uh, uh, ranks is a little bit higher for the number of edits being made on Wikipedia. On average, we are uh, 33 edits in which article, but can be considered as a, a good figure because uh, it's equivalent to the number of edits in each article or in Catalan or in Polish. There are huge uh, Wikipedias just passing uh, 1 million article milestone uh, uh, a few months ago, in which each article has been edited nearly two or three um, each, uh, each article. So that means that Wikipedia in Britain is not made by those. Um, so I said that uh, that is uh, Wikipedia in Britain is a, a, a little project, but we, what does represent Wikipedia for the Britain language and the things are changing and the things for Britain language, I think it may be true for other languages, other minority languages. By far, Wikipedia in Britain is surely the largest website written in Britain uh, in internet. Internet in Britain is small, but inside internet in Britain, Wikipedia is huge. And it's also very important because uh, watching how many books have been published in each year in Britain language, we are around 100 books have been published each, each year. So, to share knowledge, printed books are of course important for the language, but that means that internet is uh, really, really important. And in internet, uh, and, uh, in, in written language, Wikipedia represents maybe 60% of all the pages written in Britain on so for minority language, it's quite important to have a project because it keeps the language alive. And so people can keep it alive even if the, spoken, uh, the community of uh, reputers is very small. And um, one thing we have to keep in mind also is that uh, 20,000 people are studying uh, in written language each year. It's not nothing. And for them, Wikipedia is a huge resource to have information on different subjects in their language and not only to watch pages or to watch articles written in French or in other language and to make it to be translated in uh, their own languages. So by far we are uh, on to, 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 to end with matrix. We can say a lot of things with metrics, but to, to, to end with metrics, we have uh, uh, in average uh, 2 million views on written Wikipedia each month. That means that's not only to, to, to be a project, but it's a useful project to people, and people are reading what is written in written Wikipedia. So, written Wikipedia, as all the Wikipedias, is made by community. And what are the specificities of written Wikipedia communities? First of all, as uh, it has been
been told it's a small community. Only 90 active contributors regarding for other projects it can be a very, very small. And who is who are the contributors? First we have academics, people speaking and teaching in Britain, people who have a high level of in this language. And for them it's quite important to make it alive because to make Wikipedia project alive because it can be the place where it is well written in Britain. But we have also students, I said before, uh, the are there are um, two, uh, uh, 20,000 people each year to be in Britain, and for them, and, uh, uh, there are more and more uh, students in Britain, and for them, uh, they are a part of Britain, uh, Britain Wikipedia community because for them it's a place where we can where we can write in their own language on subjects they are they like. And we have, for example, a really good article in Britain Wikipedia on program one or on uh, chess player, for example. And another part of the community is people like uh, Nicola and I, people we didn't speak written uh, as a mother language, but we studied uh, as adults and we are learning and not, I think I'm still learning Britain. And we are uh, interested in making it alive through a project and to improve our uh, uh, knowledge of written languages through writing in Wikipedia. The problem with these uh, different people is that um, major contributors, people who can write easily in a uh, written language and write a lot, the main contributor has more than 100,000 edits. You can imagine even if in uh, other projects, Hundred thousand edit is huge. So for these people, we are here to write and love to write. It's difficult to um, to have um, I can just say major. It's pretty. It's difficult to be involved in global community. If you think there are community, but the, the, the community of written speaking people, but it's. May be difficult for them to imagine that Wikipedia is a huge, uh, uh, it's a huge uh, project, a huge site, and it we, in which, of course, you have to to, to, to write more or less uh, the language, but also you have to uh, not to be afraid by techniques and not to be afraid by models uh, or things like that and to be aware of what is happening on global development. And for example, recently we have uh, uh, Wikidata development and more and more Wikidata can be used for other <coughs> in Wikipedia pages and it can be uh, a little bit uh, it can be a little bit difficult for people who know how to write about program in uh, in Britain but have great difficulties to, 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 to write uh, and to, to, to know how to use the it. So that is related and key points for the future, key points for uh, through we are seen in Britain Wikipedia. Don't uh, main thing for for me is that it's important that newcomers are not discouraged. Each people is important in a small community, in each community, but especially in small community like Britain or other minor language Wikipedia. So it's important to let people come and maybe they can have, they can, uh, have problem in writing correctly in the language, but they are writing. And they are in the language they are to Wikipedia. So it's important for them, for the community, for the existing community, not to be, uh, not to have the barriers and uh, let them come. Um, another thing, in the other way, and, uh, I think that it's, it's uh, uh, a 
language is as clear as the same with uh, written language, but we have also uh, uh, an institute called uh, Office pour la langue bretonne in, in, in French, which uh, is developing and is uh, maybe centralizing things, um, uh, normalizing things. So, it was not true. Um, it was not true, perhaps 50 or 60 years ago, because it, it, it has been quite different. There, are, there, there were huge differences in uh, how to write Britain. But now we can say more or less it has been worse. But you are right. There are specificities in a small community language. You, there are. People saying that uh, we should write written this way, and uh, it's not the official way. But uh, for written, it's not such a problem because it can be understood. Understood. Yes. One very quick question. Okay, just quickly, um, an advert. Can we continue this uh, conversation tomorrow at 10 o'clock yeah. at the garden, garden room? Um, I'm from the Welsh Wikipedia, which is very, very similar to the Breton one. In fact, we say trigger and we say dioch. So they're two words which are very similar. Thanks for everything. Um, you, you, you said that I agree with you with lots of things. But I think for minority languages, there are lots of other things which could help us. For example, templates on the English Wikipedia. When you grab them and take them to the Welsh one, you need to do that for 150, sometimes more templates, one by one, copy paste, copy paste. Where they could, they could help us if they, you know, did it automatically or using Wikidata or whatever to automatically um, create info boxes and so on. So I think this conversation really should be taken another um, step forward. To help all the languages. Um, uh, last thing, very last thing. Just three o'clock, is it? Sorry, tomorrow, three o'clock, not ten o'clock, three o'clock. The last thing, are you aware um, that Google is using as a benchmark for translating its projects such as, such as Gmail and so on? Are you aware that they're using the number of articles in that wiki on that Wikipedia? So they'll be looking at the Breton or the Bresonic Wikipedia and deciding if they have X number of articles, then we will translate them um, more Google projects. So if Google does it, others do it. So the more languages, more <laughs> articles we have, the best it is because other people then translate other things. So, see you there tomorrow, 3 o'clock. No problem. <laughs> <laughs>
too many. So maybe I take like one or two sentences, and I guess the guys over here might be able to correct me or to fill in what I'm leaving out uh, about open data. When we talk about open data, we mean all the data that uh, authorities collect about us, but normally in most countries concerning the law should be given back to the citizens or made available to the citizens. Uh, this is basically open government data to be more precise and uh, in general it's all kind of structured data that should be 
implemented everything on open source, so it's uh, easy to use for other people. And we took the, I was looking at the technical solution they had, and I decided that that's the way we want to go, is state of the art. And it's, um, uh, they use CCAN and WordPress, where, which I will tell you a bit uh, more later on, uh, which are very major, powerful, uh, um, software projects with a huge developer community, which is very important for the long term. So yeah, David Garfield, I'm really, really thankful for this project. Uh, it's helped us, uh, helped us to save a lot of time, uh, which is at the end a lot of money. Uh, so the understanding we needed from a technical point, not the, not the design, it's just the coding, 300 hours of work, and it will take at least 100 hours more for the final release, because we're actually in the beta phase. Uh, but without the uh, contribution from DataGov, I think it's not it's 500, 1 million euros, something like this direction, um, to, to do something like this. Okay, so uh, the requirements first. Uh, it's first requirement, it's a community portal. There is no central institution who uh, makes the quality uh, sure. So it's a crowd uh, sourced quality. It's like uh, rankings and how good is the data quality of the data? It must be done by people like in Wikipedia. There is a central uh, guard who tells uh, what's good data and what's bad data. Uh, we have to have a box uh, function, uh, social function, like integration of um, social media uh, services. Uh, yeah. And the second part is, uh, it's 2014, so we want to build a, a platform which is really state of the art technology. Data.gov is really, really good, so the, the basis is very good to make it a good uh, platform, and we added some features necessary for us. Uh, one feature we were uh, unique is that we had a big submission and a, uh, it was a, it's possible to submit applications and data tools uh, and to automatically create this in WordPress as a post uh, and so it's very complex um, automatization process. But WordPress is also responsive so this was also a very uh, important part for us with smartphones that it get, gets responsive. But the whole workflow from a development perspective is also state of the art so it's easy to easy for other developers to adapt uh, or use our code. And the third part, uh, it's, it has to be open, and it means that we use open source, we only use open source, we also make open source code, uh, we deliver uh, open data to the community, uh, and we use open file formats for this. So it's all kind of open, which uh, leads to the point that documentation is more effort than normally when you do it just for you and no one has any read stuff what you do or doesn't change anything on this. Okay, so as said, there are two systems. They are separated, they have just a small uh, integration via an API from Seekin. Uh, but when you go on open data portal about AT, you come to the WordPress page. Uh, and uh, WordPress we use because it's a very 
the biggest advantage of this root side whole thing is um, to unify CSS and JavaScript is very easy uh, to change libraries. So really, it is uh, when you have bigger projects where a lot of different parts uh, connect into each other, uh, you need some good configuration, some good uh, structure uh, how this works, and this offers a very easy uh, and helpful uh, support for this. Also for me, as as a beginner with groups, I work with this process. Yeah, and the second part is Seekin. This is a uh, data catalog uh, developed and maintained by the Knowledge Foundation, which is heavily used uh, in the open data community. Data.gov uses it. Uh, data.gov UK, the European Open Data Box, so uh, Open Data Catalog, where you can store metadata, metadata about your data, but also you can store the data uh, you are sharing to. And, uh, on this part of the uh, software solution, uh, you can submit your files, uh, you can store them, you can manage them, so that you can edit the metadata, and you can share it. So this is kind of where all the data happens. And there you log in. So you register, you make your own account, then you uh, add a new data, uh, and yeah, then everyone else can access it because it's open data. But the one problem uh, we have with CCAN, uh, the biggest problem was that the quality assurance, the ranking, did not work. There was an extension, but it didn't work actually, so we now have this problem that uh, how to uh, make the qu uh, quality assurance. Uh, it's a little bit tricky, so we have to solve this on the next uh, part. Yeah. Uh, so the infrastructure part will tell my a little bit. Yeah, so basically um, <clears throat> it's quite simple. We started with one Linux server where we put everything on it. So it's a typical lab stack as some who are working in contact. Uh, my nose, Linux, Apache, web server, MySQL, PHP on it. Um, because we need for WordPress, we need the, the typical PHP and MySQL support. Uh, C itself is written in Python, so we need a special Python server, it's Mongrel. Uh, it also needs a different database because it wants to use Postgres, so we need to run two different database servers for both things. And uh, to serve the C interface to the outside, we use Apache as a proxy server, reverse proxy uh, to the internal uh, Mongrel port. And uh, for all the search, we need Soda. And Soda is written in Java, so we need yet another web server to serve the Java servlet. Um, and this is how it looks. And in a graphical way, you see you, everything is running on top of the uh, Linux operating system. And you have the two databases, and uh, Apache doing more or less all the public facing uh, delivery with uh, WordPress, Mongrel, and Seekan on top of it. And so the chatty is completely like contained inside. It's just like a, a service used by Seekan internally. It's not uh, seen outside. Um, the setup is made in a way, so the plan is that we could basically just copy the data uh, that we put uh, everything, I mean the static data, on a, on a shared uh, storage system, storage network and that the databases would replicate to a second or even a third server so we could basically uh, uh, multiply the servers if we need to scale for more load or size to have more server resources available. Yeah, so uh, we, you've now seen this kind of big architecture but there has to be some connection between CCAN and WordPress because of WordPress we use information about data. Uh, so, for example, you have the topic uh, sport and spare time. Uh, if you want to list up all the data, the last 10 committed data sets in this topic. So there is the solar API, which is very easy to access. Uh, yeah, and that's basically how we did it. So first point is uh, integration is uh, to connect WordPress with CPM <coughs> and to keep it synchronized, which means uh, we are 
submitting like an application on the, on the form on WordPress, and I'm trying to show it. It's not really worse for other. Exactly. So we have this form. Uh, you <coughs> submit it, and then you press absent, which means submit. Uh, and then an own post gets, gets created in WordPress. Who uh, you do you know WordPress? Uh, or have, have worked with it till now? Okay. Yeah. So here we see it at the back. And And so this is the connection from the form. You have all of those custom fields at the side where you see like description, topic, operating system, type. So it gets feeded through with the content form 7 plugin into a custom post guide called application. So that's, the, that's a really um, big part of the work because it's complicated to feed so many different fields into a post. And when you publish it, automatically an application secret gets created and the idea, idea of the post from WordPress is stored, and you get back the idea of the CCAM. So this is kind of a relation that gets created between those two systems. So, okay, so it's done. We lost. Yeah, and the second part is uh, uh, we love CCAM metadata for WordPress pages. I've told already about yeah. topics and data sets. And one of the tricky part two, see and feel no difference. Uh, so, as you see, there's one small difference in the graphic export, but mostly the header looks uh, the same. So you normally, as a user, don't know where you are right now. I mean, this is the WordPress page, the starting page, where you can search stuff and you can post, and you have description about the topics like work, finance, environment, and the blogging section. Uh, and here you have. The data catalog seeker, uh, where you see actually we have 55 uh, data sets, and where you can, when you're logged in, you can create or add a data set. So for the user, it's not, uh, 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 they, they don't see it at the beginning, but only on seeker you can log in and where you can add your stuff. So, Yeah, and one thing with the solar API is really easy to use. So we all uh, got we, we got all the data out of Seek and we are so so it's no write into the database uh, uh, queries or PHP stuff. It's really just getting it done. Yeah. So open source. Uh, uh, what to tell a little bit about? I mean, it's the, the, the normal thing. It takes more effort and documentation is much more time. But in the long run. It works, at least for us it works, because we use a lot of open source projects by ourselves. Hopefully someone else will use our project. And yeah, you can commit uh, when you come on the page, like right, if you find issues or you want to enhance documentation and stuff. So you're pleased to, to look around and tell us what's going wrong on your devices also. Right? Yeah, and the biggest challenge is CCAM was some, big, some, some, some small problems and the, 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 the ranking extension didn't work. Um, yeah, some, 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 some problems uh, on the proxy side, it's not so really my part. But WordPress made no problem, so that is really a uh, major uh, software. Uh, the form automatization was very complex, as I said before, and one thing we have to find 